Now, I've been thinking about this introduction a little bit. It's got me a little bit nostalgic. I first met Jordan Maxwell uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, I think in the late 70s. Um, and I said, my God, the late 70s, that's like 40 some years ago. And yeah, that's what it is. I've, I've been blessed to be able to be getting this incredible esoteric knowledge from Jordan. I've been listening to him, learning from him for over 40 years. He first spoke, uh, he first spoke at the IUFOC at our first Mesquite event, and I believe that was... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think about 92, yeah, yeah. So anyway, we go back. We were young then, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we both had hair. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is Jordan's final major public presentation. Jordan had some extraordinary experiences out in the desert that 92 event. I'm not sure if he's going to talk to us about that today or maybe Saturday. I don't know what his plan is, but if that's not going to be included and you get a chance to catch him in the hallway, ask him to tell you about that. Some extraordinary things happen with lots of witnesses too. Lots of witnesses. So we are all blessed because Jordan was given some extraordinary information, some stuff he couldn't reveal until this very week. I'm not going to take any more of his time because he has so much to share with all of us. Please welcome Jordan Maxwell. I love you, buddy. Thank you. I love you. I'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you as an individual for being here because it's very encouraging because I've had so much opposition uh, to people not wanting to hear. And what I want to talk about today, I am quite sure nobody's going to want to hear. <laughs> But I am convinced after some 60 years of reading and studying and talking with all the experts and lecturing and writing, etc., and many books and many hours of, of radio interviews, hundreds and hundreds of radio interviews. Uh, I started in 1959. That's 60 years ago. And I realized that the entire world was ignorant and ill-informed and even as a child, even as a kid, I realized that when you ask adults questions, they have no idea in the world what you're talking about. So they'll give you some blank, pat answer that they normally give, which is their opinion based on what they've heard from other people, which told me that you forget asking other adults well, as a child anything because they're not going to know. They're not going to understand what your questions are. <clears throat> and one of the most Im important things that happened to me when I was a little kid, seven, eight years old, I was a Catholic, born and raised in a Catholic religion. <clears throat> and, I, and according to the church, uh, Customs, a seven and eight year old child has a special day in church and there's a special church service for a child and it's called confirmation. When you as a seven year old are going to be a confirmed Catholic, asking a child at seven years old to be confirmed anything is ludicrous. But we were told, I was told in the class in, in, in the Catholic school 
the couple of days before the, the confirmation service that <coughs> it's possible that the bishop who was coming to town to officiate over the service for the children uh, that he might ask the children after the service was over if they had any questions now that they are confirmed Catholic he would try and answer the questions and so uh, we were told if the bishop does that if he asks just remember you don't have any questions <laughs> period you remain quiet and I thought to myself, even as a small kid, I thought to myself, my mother doesn't tell me what I can think. Who do you to tell me what I can ask or what I can't? And so, and so that night after the service was over, sure enough, Bishop, the bishop asked the children, now that the service is over and you children are now confirmed Catholic, I will try and answer if I can. I will try and answer any questions you may have. <clears throat> so I stood up because I knew I want, to, I want everybody in this church to know who's talking. I stood up so everyone could see me. And I said, yes, Bishop, I have a question. I said, my father works with torches like I'm a welder. And he lets me play with torches on occasions to teach me how dangerous they can be. And I know how important they, they are. And I said, suppose I, w I had a torch that was burning and an angel appears to me. If an angel appeared to me, because I, in the Bible it talks about angels appearing to men. And so suppose an angel appeared to me and I was holding a torch. Could I hit the angel with the torch when it hurt him? And he says, no. And I said, why not? And he said, because you can't even see an angel, must burn one. I said, why? I don't understand why not. And he said, because you can't burn a spirit. Spirits, are there's nothing to burn. You have to have wood, paper, plastic, something that will burn. But the spirit has no body. So there's no way for you to burn a spirit. And I said, well, then why am I concerned about going to hell where my spirit will burn forever if you can't burn the spirit? <laughs> he looked at me like he was, you know, like a deer in the headlights. <clears throat> and the little Catholic priest, very, very red-headed priest, standing very close to me, he said very loud for everyone to hear, sit down and shut up. And I thought, I can do that now. I've, I've proven that this man doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so I began asking questions of adults. And I began to realize that adults do not have any answers. And the reason why is because their parents didn't teach them any answers. And the reason why the parents didn't know is because their parents didn't teach them. And so what we have is a continual repetition of people being born into this world, coming into the world as a baby, and knowing nothing and understanding nothing. And then they grow up and they have babies and they bring in babies and more babies are growing up to have more babies. Eventually you'll have seven and a half billion people on the earth who have no idea why they're here, what they're doing, or where they're going, or where they're gonna go when they leave here. So I decided that I need, if I want to know, I need to do the research myself and start learning how to think. And being a Catholic, that's something you don't want to let people know you're doing. <laughs> so to entertain myself, I used to drop alcohol cells in the holy water. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love watching the adults get all bent out of shape when they see the holy water bubbling. <laughs> anyway, so I learned a long time ago that you need to do your own homework. And what we're asking, the kind of questions I was asking, uh, probably there was no real answer to it. Something you have to deal with in your own spirit. And so I, later on in 1959, I became aware of the influence of secret societies, secret groups like the Mafia, 
La Cosa Nostra, the underworld organizations that operate all around us. They feed us, they give us our clothes, they conduct uh, construction. The whole world, especially the, 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 the uh, world, that kind of world that we live in, is really run by organized crime. And in my opinion, the most criminal organization that's ever existed on the face of the earth, in my opinion, after 60 years of inquiring, I am totally sure it is the Vatican. The Vatican is the, um, is the most incredible, corrupt, dirtiest governmental system on the earth. And it has impacted America, it's impacted our country and our government, and it's an incredible story. So I set for myself the goal of studying as much as I could every day about the secret societies that run the world. And that started in 1959. <clears throat> I later on, after a few years, I came across a man named Anthony Helder. And Anthony Helder was a very big name in Hollywood at the time. And he had produced a series of records, 33rd and 30, 33 and a third records, all three of them, and it was called Illuminati. And in it, he had another man named Myron Fagan explain how the Illuminati secret societies operate in the world today. And it was the most incredible subject I have ever heard, most in, uh, uh, outrageous lecture I've ever heard. If you would like to hear it, it's on my website. I have a copy of it, I put it on my website. My website is Jordan Maxwell Show. S-H-O-W. You have to add the word show. JordanMaxwellShow.com And when you go on JordanMaxwellShow.com you will see an advertisement, a little flyer uh, talking about Jordan Maxwell Research website. So you have to join the research website. And the reason why you have to join it is because I have lawyer friends who have told me if you're going to tell the public things which you better be careful when you talk in public about, then you had better put it on a private website so that people have to join, which shows they want to hear. Because he, I, I, my, my lawyer friends told me, if you go to a restaurant and there's about 10 or 15 people with you, and you're sitting in the back of the restaurant with your group of people, Whatever, at, that, at that dinner table, you can say anything you want about anybody. Call them any name you please. Say anything you please about anybody. That's if your friends will <coughs> accept it. But if you go on radio or go into the public and start talking that way, that's different because government is empowered to protect the public. Therefore, if you're using terms and words and saying things about people that was very offensive, the government can come in and ultimately shut you down because they're protecting the public from hearing the truth or what you feel. And so I became fascinated with this subject of the Illuminati. And like I said, if you go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, and go to my Jordan Maxwell Research website <clears throat> that's a private website and you have to join it and it's only a one-time contribution for a lifetime subscription and if you go to the audio video part of my research website it's called audio video and click on it the very first lecture you will hear is the one I heard in 1959 that changed my life it was the most extraordinary expose of secret societies operating in the Western world and how our government really works. It was so incredible that it changed my life. And I've been going after this information for the past 60 years. And that's why I'd like to present to you today. So my, my lecture is on the exposing of the secret society called Illuminati. It has been featured in television shows, motion pictures, many books written about it. 
but I started talking about it back in 1966. It was my first year I started talking about the Illuminati. And since 66, it's now uh, in movies and motion pictures, as I said, in television shows, all over the web and all over the world. And I'm sure that probably a lot of them have heard me talking about it, and it's really extraordinary. So the lecture today is my, I would like to expose what I consider to be the most incredible secret society operating on this earth behind our U.S. government, behind the United Nations government, and behind the world religions. And believe me, one of the most important tools in the hands of these criminals is religion. The church is a nothing more, today, the church is nothing more than an integral part of the Illuminati movement in the world to expose the human race to the lies and deceptions and pre-program us so that we will begin to believe certain things which are not true. And one of the things that we believe is not true is that Jesus will be coming back to save us. There was no Jesus never existed, in my opinion, never existed. And it's gonna be very difficult for anyone to come back when we're told that Jesus will be coming back in his coming, second coming. I'm saying it would be absolutely impossible to come back and make a big comeback on the earth if you've never been anywhere to start with. And so I don't believe he's coming back because I believe he was never here to start with. And I think there's enough information out there now that most people around the world are beginning to look at the hard evidence for the beginning of Christianity and where it came from and who financed the church and who set this whole operation up in the Western world. I believe this group, the secret society of what we call the Illuminati, are the people who gave us Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The most extraordinary religion on the face of the earth, I believe, is Judaism. Because Christianity is just worshiping the sun, as mankind has been doing for thousands of years. But Judaism is the most incredible uh, religion based on what I would call the smorgasbord concept. You go through and you pick what you want from here and pick this and you pick that and you like this and you don't like that. And after you pick all the things you like, you put it together and it's called Judaism. But it changes every thousand years. Every, every five or six hundred years, Judaism completely changes. They start picking new things and then they add to the, what they already have. And so, so today, we finally end up with a religion that's dominating the world called Judaism. And Judaism is without a doubt the most eclectic, off-the-wall strange religion based on Babylonian Sumerian scriptures and all kinds of devil worship and demonism, child sacrifice, pornography, all kinds of stuff that most people have no idea in the world what the words mean and what the symbols mean. If you study theology and religion you will find out that what we have today in our world that we're being led by and our destiny is being guided by our understanding of, of theology and religion. And those religions have been dreamt up by very bright people who are very smart, very clever. And they have put together a story that will knock you out, a beautiful story. But the problem is the Bible is the greatest story ever told. The problem is it's just a story. And once you understand where it came from and what is being said, it will extraordinarily impact your life. Because the whole of Christianity and Judaism and Islam is based on two things. The power of the sun and sex, period. Sex is the basis for Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. It's a very powerful force in the world, sex. And it has given us three of the major religions of the world. And most people are totally unaware of all the symbols that are right in front of you. And it's really quite a, quite a story.
I mean, in order to be a in order to be a, a, a clergyman in the, in the Christian religion, you have to go to a seminary. <laughs> it's really incredible, and like I said, I could sit for eight hours if I could and show you words and terms that are used in the in the Christian religion and Judaism, which are nothing more than what we would call pornography. Pornographic pictures and, and, and emblems and symbols and words. It's just uh, 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 incredible what the religions of this world have gotten away with. So in order to explain the Illuminati, the Bible says in the New Testament, Ephesians six twelve, the Apostle Paul wrote about four-fifths I would say two-thirds of the New Testament was written by one man, Saul of Tarsus, the one that is in the Bible called the Apostle Paul. But the Apostle Paul who wrote two-thirds of the Christian scriptures was not a Christian. He was a Greek Gnostic. He was a Gnostic. It has nothing to do with Christianity. And <clears throat> when you understand the Gnostic tradition, then you can understand the New Testament. It's an encoded message, an encoded story that you have never been told about and is presented in such a way to look like it's history of, of a religion that had happened. In point of fact, no, it's not a religious history. It's a Gnostic traditional story. And so the Apostle Paul, the Gnostic, wrote in the New Testament, Ephesians 6, 12, he said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. When I heard a lecturer talk about this once, it caught my attention when the speaker said, go back and read what it just said. We have a war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of darkness, which impl implication is uh, the ignorance of this world, totally ignorance of this world, is being ruled over. Somebody knows what they're doing and they're misleading us purposely. So the rulers of this world of darkness implies that there is a secret group of people in the world that know better. They know exactly what's going on. They know the history of this earth. They know the history of mankind. And they are purposely misleading the human race to believe religious ideas, which have nothing to do with the reality of the world we live in. So, books like Conspiracy Against God and Man, The Study of the Beginning, and the Early History of the Great Conspiracy. This is what I choose to call this subject, The Great Conspiracy Against the Human Race. Uh, Woodrow Wilson, the 33rd president, I think he was, uh, of the United States said, since I entered politics, I have chiefly had men's views confided to me privately. Some of the biggest men in the United States in the, in the field of commerce and manufacture are, are afraid of something. They know that there is a power somewhere so organized, so subtle, so watchful, and so interlocked, so complete and so pervasive that they had better not speak above a breath when they speak in condemnation of it. What the president is saying is that people who run this planet, the guys at the top, know that there is a very powerful secret criminal organization, like, in your mind, like the mafia, like the Cosa Nostra, secret societies. And they are very dangerous and deadly. And if you know about them, you need to keep your mouth shut. And I can, I can tell you some stories you would not believe about the underworld. Uh, John Kennedy said, there's a plot in this country to enslave every man, woman, and child. Before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose this plot. 
Yeah, this was seven days before somebody exposed him to a plot. He was assassinated. The president of the United States was killed in public and nobody went to prison. No one went to jail. It was all washed over and nobody cares. It's over and done. He's dead and gone. Somebody killed the president and got away with murder. There is another book called World Revolution, The Plot Against Civilization by Nesta Webster from the Webster, the Webster uh, Dictionary family. She was very, very bright and very incredibly smart. And she wrote a book called World Revolution, The Plot Against Civilization. Here is a picture that is exactly in my mind, a picture from the World Revolutionary Movement. It's called the WRM, World Revolution Movement. And it's a secret society uh, of criminals who run banks, insurance companies, governmental systems, uh, advisors to government. And I've known some of them personally, and I've learned some of this from the people I've known personally. And it's an incredible organization. You'll see in the back above the head of the guy at the opposite end of the table, you'll see the pyramid on the dollar bill. The pyramid on the dollar bill, the eye on the pyramid, on the back of the dollar bill represents the Jewish Messiah. The Messiah in Judaism, the one who is to come, the Messiah, is, is a word that is used in the ancient Greek and the Hebrew religion for a triangle with an eye on top of a pyramid. Many people do not know that. Many Jews have no idea in the world what that eye on the pyramid represents. It's their Messiah. And the same word in the ancient Greek is used in the New Testament for Jesus. Jesus is referred to as the chief cornerstone, which is in the ancient Greek language means a triangle on top of a pyramid with an eye. So that pyramid on the dollar bill represents the human family, the whole human race. And that triangle at the top represents the Messiah, the highest intellect and the highest spiritual presence in the universe that mankind is building up to. We're all hopefully climbing up the, you know, the, the pyramid of knowledge and wisdom to be able to reach up and touch the Messiah, to reach up and touch Jesus, the greatest knowledge that we could possibly have coming from God, because it's an eye and a pyramid. The eye is, of course, the sun. <clears throat> anyway, here in the 11th report is called the Senate Investigating Committee on Education. It's the California legislature. This is a California state document. And as you will see, it's published by the Senate of the State of California. This is back in 1953, the regular, the regular session. It says, since many intelligent persons, even in high official positions, do not appear to have acquainted themselves with the real nature and the seriousness of communism, it is perhaps appropriate to give briefly some really off in, in, informative and authentic data concerning communism goes on to say communism and Russia are not and are by no means synonymous. Russia merely occupies the, the, uh, oh, occupies the unfortunate position of being communism's first victim. Communism is, is synonymous with world revolution and seeks the destruction of all nations, private property, and all political and civil liberties. And <clears throat> this is what we want to talk about today. So-called, the next page in the California Senate report says, so-called communism, modern communism, is apparently the same hypocritical and deadly world conspiracy to destroy civilization that was founded by the secret order of the Illuminati of Bavaria. On May 1st, 1776, 
<clears throat> and that raises hoary head in our colonies here at the critical periods before the adoption of our federal constitution. See the book World Revolution by Nesta Webster. The World Revolution conspiracy appears to be to have been a well organized and a continuing plot and even and ever on the alert to take advantage of every op of every opportunity presenting itself or that the conspirators could create. It goes on to say it is significant in this in this connection that as early as 1783, when unsettled conditions and and dissatisfaction in some quarters had arisen in the American colonies, a subversive anonymous sermons were circulated among the colonial army to incite dissatisfaction and rebellion. George Washington immediately called the army together and in addressing them, he used this significant language. George Washington said, quote, my God, what can this writer have in view, in view by recommending such measures? Can he be a threat? Can he be a friend to the army? Can he be a friend to this country? But, Can he be a friend to this country? <laughs> Is he not an insidious foe, some emissary perhaps from New York, <clears throat> the Empire State, plotting the ruin of both? And then he goes on to say in the, bo the bottom paragraph, the state of California goes on to say, it is plain that Washington believed that the center of the secret conspiracy, so far as this country was concerned, to be located in New York and felt it to be his duty to make such a, uh, such a direct uh, comment. So George Washington is saying there's some emissaries from New York who are plotting the ruin of our baby country, of our new country, from New York. Yeah, the Communist Party of the New York State. <clears throat> new York has been, whether the center of this conspiracy, so far as this country is concerned, has continued to use New York as its base up to the present time, it is very apparent that in recent times, New York has held and is now holding the center for the stage for communist activities in this country. So we now see that the second paragraph goes on to say the recognition of May 1st, 1776 as the founding date of this world revolution conspiracy is so is not so difficult to understand when in recent times the rioting and bloodshed on a worldwide scale is is all over the world on May Day May Day May Day is a revolutionary day to celebrate the founding of the world revolution conspiracy to overthrow governments of the world <coughs> I have been told by people who worked at Area 51, what are, you, what are you talking about when you say Area 51? May Day is 5-1. January, February, March, April, May, 5. May Day is 5-1. Area 51 is the revolutionary movements are there in Area 51 providing the research and the development of all the communistic activities going on <clears throat> in the Western world. Area 51 is a hotbed for other world research, other world life forms. I know that I've seen them myself. And so I know there's a connection between, ultimately one day we will see the connection between the extraterrestrial presence in our universe 
and the world communist movement and the world Nazi movement. <clears throat> they are being led by spirits. They're being led by what the Bible talks about, demons and devils and spirits and, and ancient spirits. Well, there's, there is something to that idea that there are life forms on this earth that are far superior to us in our intelligence and that they are the powers behind our world governments and our governments, our religions and our institutions that guide the whole human family. <coughs> It talks about, maybe Johnny, you could read this. Okay. Can they turn my mic on? We have the audio. In issuing this manifesto, the communist conspirators evidently believe the time had arrived when, with the aid of ignorant victims, a worldwide takeover could be accomplished. But there were not enough ignorant victims then, and the expected coup failed. And it quotes, the communist conspirators thereupon conceived the plan for the future of supplementing the long-established secret conspiracy in existence since May 1st, 1776, with an unremitting public campaign for victims among the ignorant of all nations. And in an attempt to hide from view the underlying hypocritical conspiracy existing since May 1st, 1776, it was decided that in such public campaign the manifesto of 1848 should be heralded as the founding date of communism and Karl Marx, Karl Marx falsely proclaimed it as its author. Right. Again, we go back to the book, Conspiracy Against God and Man. <clears throat> it says, regarding these same secret and powerful forces, Benjamin Disraeli, who was the first Jewish prime minister of the British Empire, Benjamin Disraeli, the English statesman, gave testimony in the British House of Commons in July of 1856. And on that occasion, he said, there is in Italy a power which we seldom mention in this house. I mean the secret societies in Italy. It is useless to deny because it's impossible to conceal that the great part of Europe and the whole of Italy, France, and a great portion of Germany, not to, not, not to say nothing about the other countries, is covered with the network of these secret societies just as the surfaces of the earth is now being covered with railroads. So he's talking about this government of the, this government was moved to make the following statement. He, this person was moved to make the following statement. <clears throat> the government of the past, of the present day, the governments of the present day have to deal not merely with other governments, with em emperors and kings and ministers, but also the secret societies which have everywhere their unscrupulous agents and can at the last moment upon upset all the government's plans. We go to another book written by Nesta Webster called Secret Societies and Subversive Movements. Um, chapter 12 talks about the secret societies that operate in England. And here, the first page on secret societies in England, we see it is in the opinion of the initiate who belonged for years to the Stella Matratina which was a very ancient cult, a uh, religious cult in England. And this lady who was a member of this ancient cult uh, was being interviewed by Nesta Webster. And she said, in the opinion of this initiate who belonged for years to the Stella Matrapina, the dynamic force employed as Kundalini is simply an electromagnetic force of which the, f the f of which sex force is a, is a part, the sex force is a part on which the adepts know how to play. They're playing with it in television and everywhere today. And the unseen hand behind all of the seeming spiritism of these orders is, is a system of very subtle and cunning hypnotism and suggestion. 
Then she goes on to say, she's being interviewed by Nesta Webster, and the bottom is another quote from this lady. She said, I have been convinced that we, as an order, Stella Matratina of England, have come under the power of some very evil order, occult order, profoundly versed in science, both occult and otherwise. Though not infallible, their methods being black magic, that is to say electromagnetic power, hypnotism, and powerful suggestion. She goes on to say, we are convinced that their order, Stella Matratina, is being controlled by some kind of a sun order after the nature of the Illuminati, if not by that order itself. Some kind of a sun order? That's an interesting term. In order to understand the world crises today, we need to go back 4,400 years ago to the Mesopotamian sun worship. Later became the Aton worship of ancient Egypt. And this is where the real story begins. Aton worship is the problem we are facing today on the earth all over the world. There is a very powerful secret society that we loosely call Illuminati. But what they are doing is they're using the occult mystical powers of ancient, of ancient Egypt, and they call it Aton, A-T-O-N, Aton worship. Aton worship is the worship of the god of the sun in Egypt. The sun god was called Aton, A-T-O-N. Aton became Aten, and Aten became the sun god of Egypt. And so the Aton worship in ancient Egypt is what's dominating us today. Here is a picture of Aton, the sun god, in the ancient Egyptian system. The Aton was a very powerful secret society sun god. And the sun illuminates the human world. And so when the sun brings light into the world, we say they are enlightened, or illuminati. They are illuminated. Highly intelligent secret societies knowing things in science and occultism and mysticism and war and technologies that we humans are don't, you know, know nothing about. But these people at the top of the world who are running our world for us, they are Aton worshipers. Now in Hebrew, the word for God is Yahweh. Yahweh, Y-A-H-W-E-H is the God of Israel, whose name was revealed to Moses as four letters called the Tetragrammaton. If there are any Jews here, you will know Tetragrammaton is a name which, which uh, Israel allows anybody to use that name Tetragrammaton to represent God of Israel. But you cannot use his name. You can only use a term which is associated with his name. And that term is Tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton in the New Testament, names and titles of God in the New Testament. And the word testament and the word Tetragrammaton is the name of God of Israel called Tetragrammaton. Tetra means four. Gram, G-R-A-M-M, means letters. Well, you'll see there are four Hebrew letters inside the sun burst. And so the Jews are worshiping what we call the Tetragram Aton, because the Aton was the Egyptian sun god. So therefore, this is, will explain all the mysticism going on in secret societies, in government, and all of the incredible betrayal of the human race because we have Jews which are worshiping the Aton. And this Aton worship is all part of government, of religion, churches, synagogues. All over the world, the Aton is a dark force of world criminality. And it's four letters worshiping the word, the name of God in Hebrew. 
So it's called the Tetragram Aton. Let's talk about the sun itself as a powerful symbol. Thousands and countless thousands of years ago, the sun was obviously a very powerful symbol to the ancient prehistoric mankind. They didn't understand the sun. They didn't understand themselves. They, just as we don't today. But the sun dominated the whole of the earth. And so about almost 4,500 years later, today the sun symbol, sun symbol still dominates the world of mankind in every respect. So we see that the rising sun over the mountains is a very powerful picture in the minds of ancient peoples, we, you know, because it represented the coming back of life, because it gets very dark at night and very cold and frightening, and it's only until God's Son comes and He returns. And so the question has to be asked, who owns the Son? Well, obviously nobody on the earth owns the Son. Well, if the Son is owned by someone, who would it be? And then you say, well, if you're philosophical about the question, or if you're, if you're inclined to be religious, you could say that God owns the sun. So therefore, God's son is the light of the world. That's what we say about Jesus. God's son is the light of the world. No, S-U-N is the light of the world. And God's son is our risen savior. Why? Because every morning about 5.30, he rises. And the sun is your savior. Watch what's going to happen to the human race if the sun is never gone. If the sun doesn't come up, we're dead in three weeks. So therefore, God's son is the light of the world and he is our risen savior. And it's an incredible story about how Christianity was built up by the Illuminati and given to us when we were children and we didn't realize that the Vatican was actually the center for organized crime. I don't know if I said this at the beginning, but the Holy Father in, in Rome is referred to as the Holy Father. And the Holy Father is the Holy Father because he represents God. He's the original God Father. And so that's where we get Mafia, La Cosa Nostra, our thing, the secret societies in Italy, <clears throat> basically because the Roman Catholic Church is the answer to all the connections with organized crime around the world. The sun has always symbolized not only the light for mankind to see his way each day, <clears throat> but more importantly, intellectual and spiritual enlightenment of the inner soul or mind of mankind. So that's why we say, Oh, it just dawned on me what you were saying. It just dawned on me. What do you mean dawned on you? It means that the sun, the light of the sun, just came into your dark, ignorant, ill-informed, and unread mind that you've been stumbling around the world with your darkness in your mind. And someone who is trying to intellectually, spiritually advise you and teach you something, we say, well, that person's brilliant. Well, if he's brilliant and he's trying to tell you how to think and trying to show you where things come from, then you say, oh, it just dawned on me. So we say things like, oh, I see what you mean. It just dawned on me what you're talking about. Sorry. What do you mean dawned on you? Well, the sun just came up in my brain. I've just been enlightened. I've just learned something because I can see it now because the sun is up and now I can see what you're saying. So I can see what you're saying. It just dawned on me. Well, it's like the earth is, is people are waking up all over the earth continually on a, on a continual basis. As the sun moves across the earth, the, the, where the light is, the people are waking up. It just dawned on them. The sun is up, time to get up. And but the other half is sound asleep. And so that's what we are up against. People like myself trying to educate the world around me. But most people are ignorant and ill-informed and in the dark and have no idea in the world about the extraterrestrial connection that is guiding our destiny. 
one day is going to show. We have such uh, abilities to educate ourselves through newspapers, magazines, etc. Newspapers are called Sun Community Newspapers. The Daily Sun, the Sun Sentinel, the Sun Newspaper, the New York Sun, the Herald Sun, the Las Vegas Sun, the Alpine Sun, the Claremont Sun, the Vancouver Sun. These are all newspapers based on the idea that the sun, when it rises, it brings light into the world. And now you can read and understand what's going on with your life. So that's why we have newspapers called the Sun Times. And here you have worldly rulers on the earth who wear a sun disk on their head. We see that in almost all the ancient cultures. The kings and rulers wear the sun disk on their head because they represent the sun god, Aton. But I need to remind you, Aton was a very powerful demonic god. It was not the, the uh, god of intellectual, spiritual enlightenment, no. It was a very powerful evil god, the Aton. And this is why today our religions of this world and our governmental systems are filled with Aton worship. So that what looks holy on the outside is actually inside filled with dead men's bones. It's filled with all kinds of pornography and violence. It's a very bad story about how we've been deceived into thinking that Christianity represents God. It does not. We have sun helmets that have been used in ceremonies in Central America and South America, people representing themselves as sun gods. And some of the people represent, and you'll always see the sun gods with the sunburst around their head. And Native Americans worship the, the, the sun itself. And so uh, uh, acknowledging the sun as the basis for God's enlightening the human race so we can see what we're doing each day is obvious. <clears throat> and this idea of a rising sun headdress goes back thousands of years. But for our purpose, we will go back only to the ancient Roman Empire. The Assyrians, the ancient Assyrians used to have sunrise helmets, where you can see the sunrise on the helmets of the Assyrian soldiers. But the Rome, the Roman Empire when being developed, also had sunrise helmets to represent that they were worshiping God's sun, the light of the world. They are the bringers of the new dawn, the, bring, the bringers of the new sun that will rise. And so the Roman soldiers and the Roman generals all wore sunrise helmets. And this is where we get in the Vatican, the worship of God's sun, the light of the world. The Vatican is the biggest criminal organization on the face of the earth. You can tell that by how many mafiosi and gangsters would go to Rome and bow on their knees and kiss the ring of the Pope. The idea is you better bow on your knees and kiss the ring of the Pope. Because if he decides he doesn't like you anymore, you're dead. You're a dead man walking. And so, in fact, the ancient Romans, there was, in ancient Rome, there was an imperial Roman sun cult. And that's what we want to look at today. The imperial Roman sun cult in Rome Today we refer to it, it's still there, we call it the Vatican. And in the Vatican you will see the sun at the back of the Vatican as the, you know, the whole instrumentality of the Roman Catholic Church is based on the sun worship of Aton. Then we talk about the evolution of the imperial cult. The, uh, the official offer of cult, of the, of the word cult, to a living emperor acknowledged his office and rule as the divinely appointed and constitutional because Caesar represented the Aton, the absolute God of power on the earth. And he was the epitome. He was the Godfather. 
Here you will see Mithra. Mithra was the, was the imperial sun god of the ancient Roman Empire. And you will see Mithra in the ancient Roman Empire with the spokes around his head, obviously being the, the, um, the sun rays. And then the new sun god, Mithra, in Rome today is, of course, Jesus with the sun rays around his head. This is the same thing you will see in the Statue of Liberty, with the Statue of Liberty, with the spokes around the head of the Statue of Liberty. And so it all goes back to the ancient Roman Empire and the worship of the sun god. And in this one reference book about the ancient sun cult, it talks about the sun cult to the first century of Europe, the political background, the, uh, the establishment of the cult of Solus Invicti, and the dogma being taught, the continuation of the cult of Solus Invicti. Solus Invicti was Solus, the sun, and Invicti means victory. So the sun was always going to be victorious because he dies at night and is gone. And so the prince of darkness comes out. The, the one we call the devil, he's a prince of darkness. He doesn't come out till he gets dark. And so in the Egyptian system, the god of the darkness, the prince of darkness was, was referred to as Set. And when they realized in Egypt that, it, that the, the, uh, the world does become dark at sunset. So he's the evil son who is named Set. And so the invincible Mithra was a Solus Invictus, means he's victorious. Every morning he will rise again. He may have been chased away and died at night, but he will come back and he will rise again. And so he's always going to be our risen savior. Dios Solus Invicti is the true Roman sun god. Now at this point we need to point out that in all cultures the sun was and still is represented by the eagle. For example, the eagle is a symbol for the rising sun and its glory and power. The strong link between eagles and the sun can be traced back to uh, the ancient times and the ancient empires. The sun was always associated with eagles because the eagles fly high and they have a incredible eyes that can see everything. So the ancient people said, well, that's what the sun does. It flies high, they can see everything a man does. So God's watching you. And here we have Caesar. And you will see on his breastplate, the sun god, Hatan, the sun god. And beneath him is the eagle, which represents the sun god in, in Rome. In the Second World War, his Benito Mussolini's fascist coin on the left, and on the American side, the U.S. fascist coin on the right. It's almost identical. It's because America is the new Roman Empire. America is the new empire of Rome. <clears throat> Why? Because Caesar, in the history books, it would tell you, if you go back to the history books, every morning Caesar would get up and would, quote, go up on the hill. So we know that the Roman Senate was up on the hill. It was called Capitoline Hill. This is what we have. Every morning the president gets up, he goes up on the hill. What hill? Capitol Hill. That's what it was called in Rome. So therefore, Caesar now is officiating over the empire on Capitol Hill, the Roman Senate. And the president today has to deal with the Senate and, and on the hill. So we're talking about the same identical government because when Caesar left Europe, Caesar took over all of Europe. He wasn't happy with oh, controlling Europe. He wanted Britannia. He wanted the British Empire under his belt. So he sent his troops into England and took over the British Empire. And he set up his government in England to represent the Roman Church, the Roman Vatican, the Roman Church, or the Roman power source in, in, the, uh, in England. And where was that, where, what city did Caesar use as a center for his powerful government in England? 
He chose York, England. York, England was where the center for power, Roman power in the British Empire was in York, England. Today we have New York, the Empire State. That's because it's New York is the state of the new Roman Empire. So the New York is the Empire State. Incredible story about what New York really is and what America really is. We are the Roman Empire. So we see that the, that the eagle is representing the sun. And above the eagle's head on the dollar bill, you will see 13 little stars. You see the 13 stars together? What do they make up collectively? Collectively, those 13 stars, you will see they make up the Star of David. The Star of David is above the American eagle's head. And, on one, and you will see there are 13 arrows on one side of the eagle and 13 leaves and berries, 13 leaves and berries on the other. And there are nine tail feathers. That's because in world Nazi Freemasonry and what we call Roman Freemasons, in Roman Freemasonry there is something called the Council of Nine. Supposedly there are nine men who control the Vatican's secret societies of organized crime. Nine men. And that's why there are nine tail feathers on the bottom of the eagle, because the tail feathers direct to where the eagle can fly to. <clears throat> so the eagle represents the Roman Empire. But there's a problem with eagles. They only have two wings. They have a left wing and a right wing. And so today, that's what we have, a left wing and a right wing press, a left wing and a right wing in America. So we see that the eagle is a symbol for the sun. Now comes something interesting now. The rising sun god, Shemesh, is cutting his way through the mountainous mountains of the east on his <clears throat> gravestone cuneiform uh, seal showing the major solar deity of the Akkadian dynasty, which ruled in Mesopotamia for about 2350 to 2200 BC. You will see in the middle, inside the round circle of the sun, the god, the sun god Shemesh is rising through the mountains. And on the right hand side it says the ancient Akkadian sun god Shemesh, which is a Hebrew term for the Aton, they call it, uh, they call, the Jews call him Shemesh, <clears throat> which is the Aton, the sun god. The ancient Akkadian sun god Shemesh is now the Old Testament god of Israel, who today is known as El Shaddai which basically means the more we change, the more we stay the same. Still worshiping the old Aton in Israel. Here is a better picture of that seal. And you will see the sun god coming up from the mountains. He's coming up between the two mountains. Now, look at the sun god as he's coming up between the two mountains. And you will see on the bottom right you will see an Egyptian uh, interpretation of the same uh, sun god rising above the mountains. This is the same identical symbol as only in Egyptian. And you will see the sun rise between the two mountains of Shemesh or Aton. Holy is my God. A very ancient world-class symbols of the god of the world rising between two mountains is still used in religions today. So we have holy as my God. And this holy is the God uh, Shemesh who is coming up through the mountains and clawing his way through the mountains and rising. What's interesting though, is this idea of the sunrise between two mountains. You watch this. First of all, there was a book put out just recently, the last few years, called Fire in the Minds of Men, The Origins of the Revolutionary Movement. The Origins of the Revolution, the World Revolutionary Faith and Movement by James Billington. James Billington was the chief librarian for the Library of Congress. 
You don't get any more mainstream than that. And in his book, he said, the history of modern revolutions is the story of people in the grip of ideas and beliefs. And this masterful work, James Billington, whose first book was called The Icon and the Acts, established him as both a formidable scholar and a sparkling storyteller. But in this book called The Fire in the Minds of Men, he traces the current the course of the revolutionary faith from its earliest origins and occult Freemasonry to the allegedly scientific Marxism of today. So when we talk about scientific Marxism, world communism is actually being carried on by a secret society in Rome, which we call <coughs> Freemasonry. The Masonic orders are different in every country, but in Rome, Freemasonry is an organized criminal operation and who has been featured in motion pictures and television shows and documentaries. <clears throat> now, here at the front of the book, the first of the book is in the introduction is a very important comment by James Billington. He said, a recurrent mythic model for revolutionaries, early romantics, young Karl Marx and the Russians of Lenin's time was Prometheus, who stole fire from the gods for the use of mankind. The Promethean faith of revolutionaries resembles in many respects the general modern belief that science would lead men out of darkness into the light. But there was also a more pointed millennial assumption that, quote, on the new day, the sun that was dawning, the, the sun would never set. That's a very important term, the new day. You will see it everywhere. So I'm going back to the Promethean face of revolutionaries resembles in many respects the general modern belief system that science would lead men out of darkness into light and that there was also a more pointed millennial assumption that on the new day that was dawning, the sun would never set. The early during, early during the French Revolutionary period was born the idea of a solar myth of the revolution, suggesting that the sun was rising on a new world order on a new era in which the whole world was going to become a world revolutionary movement and in which darkness would vanish forever. <clears throat> the image became implanted at the level of consciousness that simultaneously inter interpreted something real and produced a new reality. The new reality that they sought, the French Revolution sought, was, was radically secular and stringently simple. The ideal was not the balanced complexity of the new American Federation, but the occult simplicity of his great seal on the all-seeing eye atop the pyramid over the words Novas Ordo Seclorum, which is the Latin for New World Order. And that's what the Pope is always talking about, the coming of the new world order. We should all work toward the new world order. That's world communism being promoted by the Vatican, financed and organized by the Vatican. Here in New York, you will see Prometheus who stole fire from the gods and brought it down to earth. The idea is that Prometheus was a god who could go into heaven and hear what the gods of the universe are saying and what they're going to do. And then he would take those secrets from the gods and quietly come down here to the earth and tell us how to form our Illuminati to control our earth, just like the gods are doing it with our whole creation. And so here in, the, in New York's uh, Rockefeller Plaza, you have Prometheus, of course. Rockefellers were the mo most uh, important financiers of the Communist Party of China. The Communist Party of Russia was financed by the Rockefellers. They put up the money to form the Soviet Union. And so here is Prometheus stealing fire. 
Here's a close-up picture of, of Prometheus stealing the fire from the gods. And this is the same fire that you will see on the back of the dime and the Statue of Liberty is holding. The Promethean fire of revolution represents the fire of revolution around the world. <clears throat> Again, a recurrent myth, myth, the recurrent mythic model for revolutionaries and early romantics, the young Karl Marx and Russians of Lenin's time was Prometheus. And then I drop down to where it says, and that the new day that was dawning, the sun would never set. <clears throat> During the French Revolution was born the, the solar myth of the revolution, suggesting that the upheaval <clears throat> was being caused in France by the solar myth of a world revolution that was coming to the whole earth. And these were the French Grand Orient Temple Masons that were holding this belief and promoting it through the Vatican. <clears throat> Masonic Orders of Fraternity by Manly E. Hall. Manly Hall was a profoundly gifted uh, Masonic master, and <clears throat> he was my dear friend. But in his book called The Masonic Orders of Fraternity, he wrote this. <clears throat> the direct descent of the essential program of the esoteric societies or schools, the direct descent of the essential program of the esoteric schools was entrusted to groups already well conditioned for the work. <clears throat> The guilds, trade unions, similar protective and benevolent societies had been internally strengthened by the introduction of a new kind of learning. It was called communism, a new learning, a new way to view the world of government. And the advancement of this plan required the enslavement of the boundaries of the philosophical overstatement. A world fraternity, we're talking about a new world order, a world fraternity <clears throat> was needed, sustained by a deep and broad program of education according to the method. Such a fraternity could not immediately include all men, but it could include and it could unite the activities of certain kinds of men, yeah, all mafiosi gangsters, regardless of their racial or religious beliefs of the nations in that they lived and the nations that they lived in. These were, Manly P. Hall's words says, these were the men of towardness, those sons of tomorrow, whose symbol was a blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. He goes on to say, while it is difficult, obviously, to trace the elements of a pattern that was never intended to be obvious, the broad shape of the design is dimly apparent. There is a secret, invisible empire, a world revolutionary communism and mafiosi and organized crime on the earth. But the most important part is says these were the men of towardness, those sons of tomorrow, who used the symbol. Their symbol was a blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. Over the mountains of the east, a blazing sun that these uh, cult Freemasons are going to use as they build their new world communist order over the world. Well, here in North Korea, North Korea, you will see the communist symbol of the sun rising over the mountain of the east. <clears throat> and they're all celebrating the rising sun of a dawn of a new day. This is in North Korea. Communist Party in India, as a Marxist Leninist Communist Party in India. And what do you see as a sun rising over the mountains of the east? You will see in the uh, Rastafarians in the Caribbean what their revolutionary communist music call uprising. You will see 
the sunrise over the mountains of the east, a symbol for the world revolutionary movement. Here on the stamps of uh, Israel, you will see in Israel on the stamps, these were the men of towards us, those sons of tomorrow, whose symbol was a blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. And there it is in Israel. Here you will see some of the countries that when the Soviet Union took over in Asia, <clears throat> the Soviet Union has so many little countries under them. And all of these little countries that the Soviet Communist Party took over, all their countries were always symbolized by a mountain rising over the, the sun rising over the mountains of the east. <clears throat> Here's Romania with the sunrise over the mountains. In communist Mongolia, you'll see the sun rising over the mountains. You'll see it everywhere in the Soviet Union. In Armenia, you will see the sun rising over the mountains of Armenia. The sun rising over the mountains. And here it is again in Armenia back in 1919. You'll see the sun rise over the mountain. It's a symbol for the, the world revolutionary Masonic order who's operating out of the Vatican, operating purposely to overthrow the governments of the world and to bring under subjection all of the peoples of this world under a communist regime, under a one world government with absolute power over the whole human race. You'll still, you will always see the sunrise behind the mountains and all communist symbolism of the different countries that communism has taken over. And here in Russia, you will see the Russian colors of red, white, and blue. Most people don't know that the new Russian colors, official colors of the, of the Russian Federation is red, white, and blue. And what do you see is a sunrise behind the mountains of the, of the east. So we see it everywhere, the concept of the sunrise behind the mountains representing the world revolutionary movement. Here's the international official organ of the independent theosophical society. And you will see above is the Star of David and the swastika and the uh, crux from Egypt. And you will see uh, in the Egyptian door, you will see the sun rising over the mountains of the east. The People's Republic of, of Japan, you see the sun rising over the mountains of the east. Uh, even in, uh, <clears throat> in Asia, you will see the same concept. Everywhere you see Bolivia, that the sun rises over the mountains. Masonic Orders of Fraternity, again, talks about the sun. Those, the symbol was for the blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east. This is important because you have, in the west, you have British Columbia, the sun rising over the mountain. And then on the east coast, you have the District of Columbia. <clears throat> Here you have the state of Arizona. You see the sun rising over the mountains. Here's Nevada. There's uh, Montana. You will see the sun rise over the mountains of the east. Here's Romania with the sunrise, Communist Mongolia. We have the state of Ohio with the sun rising over the mountains of the east. This just shows you how the Illuminati has set up our states and our state governments a long time before your great, great grandmother was even born. A long time ago, back in the 1800s, 17s and 1800s, when America was being founded, all of our states that were being founded or being founded by the secret societies of Freemasons out of Rome. The Holy Father, who represents God, he was the Godfather. <clears throat> this is why our country is in the condition it's in today. The state of Arizona, you see the sunrise. Nevada, you see the same. You'll see the same sunrise everywhere you look. The state of Indiana, you'll see the sunrise over the mountains. Uh, the, the Department of the Interior back in 1849, 
<clears throat> when you see but the sun rising over the mountains of the east. Nevada again. Santa Barbara, the city of Santa Barbara has a sunrise over the mountains of the east. <clears throat> the state of Alaska. And in New York, the symbol for the state of New York is a sun rising over the mountains of the east. Again, you see the same thing. New York and New York City and New York State, <clears throat> Kansas. So this is a very important symbol of the sun rising over the mountains. Uh, the obviously the idea is to express that the world revolutionary movement called the Illuminati is setting up your world, it's setting up your country, it's setting up your different states, it's setting up your banking institutions, it's conducting your wars, it's setting up your churches and your religions, and the entire superstructure of Western civilization is being quietly and professionally put together in such a way that you will never know how your government really works. But they are in control, period. And here we have the Arab Federation. You'll see the sunrise behind the mountains of the east with the Arab symbols for the swords. <clears throat> now here is interesting, here's an interesting side note. This is a, the, the old seal that we saw before, Shemesh the sun god rising. Look on the bottom, at the bottom right, you will see the Egyptian uh, counterpart. This is the old uh, Assyrian sun god Shemesh, but uh, you'll see the Egyptian uh, counterpart. You see this symbol? Yeah. Well, here's the sunrise over the mountains on Google. Google. Uh, the Egyptian sunrise you will see on the bottom right. Sunrise over the mountains on Google. Sunrise on the mountains on Apple. You have sunrise over the mountains on Microsoft. Sunrise over the mountains on Samsung. Sunrise over the mountains on Twitter. Sunrise over the mountains on Facebook. Sunrise over the mountains. Sunrise over the mountains. This is why all of these different systems are referred to as social networks. <coughs> Why? Because it's show socialism. Socialism is referred to uh, as the USSR. When there was a Soviet Union, it used to be called the USSR. USSR for the Soviet Communist Party was the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. USSR. Today, we don't have socialist republic. We have the whole entire world is, is now being brought into some kind of a world socialist movement or world communism in which the whole earth is going to be guided by a secret society of Freemasons uh, operating out of Rome. As far back as we can go back in history, we can see it came out of Rome. And the new day that was dawning would never, the sun would never set, the new day. Well, here's the Soviet coat of arms back in 1923. The 1923, when the Soviet Union was being founded, they had the Soviet coat of arms. All countries must have a, Soviet, uh, must have a coat of arms. So back in 1923, we have the Soviet Union. The World Communist Party set up the Soviet Union, and it says in the dictionary, the Soviet coat of arms left graphically presents the dawn of a new day for the entire world. I just said that before. The new day is dawning. And so the Soviet coat of arms graphically presents the dawn of a new day. And here we have a Hillary Clinton running the dawn of a new day for a Hillary Clinton, a Soviet operative in America. And they are the people, uh, B.O., Barack Obama, O.B.O., and, uh, and Clinton. <clears throat> they both are crying about uh, Trump co colluding with Russians when they are themselves Soviet agents operating inside the United States.
pretty incredible. The dawn of a new day. The Communist Party was ecstatic over the night uh, over the 2008 election because they finally got old B.O. into office. Barack Obama, the world famous communist Marxist Leninist overthrower of the United States of America, and the people loved it. The people loved him. Well, that's what the Illuminati masters, the Freemasonic orders out of Rome, they knew. The people will love Obama because he's a black man and he talks like a white man. And Hillary Clinton with her dawn of a new day. <clears throat> a new day is dawning. Yeah, thank God he's gone. Here we have Mr. Obama's win was announced in Times Square, New York. And all the airhead, dingbat, knuckle-dragging, goofballs, uneducated dingbats are all crying because we've finally got an old Marxist-Leninist communist who's going to bring about a new world order. And we've been praying for someone to come and bring a new world order, world communism. And this is incredible. A new day dawns for our country. Yeah. <clears throat> Ralph Nader says, yeah, it's a new day for America. Yeah, Spider-Man is a brand new day for Spider-Man. In 1939, you will see, 1939, the World's Fair, what was the theme for the World's Fair in 1939? See the sun through the grave. It's the dawn of a new day. Hail the dawn of a new day. That's the 1939 World's Fair. 1939 when the, when the Second World War began with Adolf Hitler. And here it is in Deutschland, uh, Germany. You will see the sunrise on the left behind the mountains of the east and you will see it's a Nazi symbol. Here again, there's a sunrise behind the mountains of the east on uh, both of those symbols. You will see it's the eagle with the swastika. Here is an article from the German magazine talks about Adolf Hitler, the old Adolf Hitler, the old Marxist, Lenin, Soviet, communist, Nazi Führer, who fed the German people the scam from the Vatican and British BS, and it's worked, it worked for a while. Hitler said, Germany can be saved only by the dictatorship of a national will and the determination to take action. My fellow Germans, awaken. The new day is dawning. I've heard that before. The Nazis with the new day that was dawning, with the communists in Russia whose new day was dawning, and now it's finally starting to dawn on the whole world we have been had. The entire human race is now in the hands of the secret societies because our states were founded by them, our government was founded by them, our criminal justice system was founded by them, their court systems. It's an incredible story of how the Western world America has been betrayed and ignorant people have no idea in the world what's coming down and what's going to happen to America soon. It's all there. The dawn of a new day, says Hitler. <clears throat> Pope calls for a world new order. I can imagine. <clears throat> Soviet coat of arms, the dawn of a new day. This is talking about the Solomon's Temple. And in, in the Hebrew dictionary, it talked about the temple was laid out on the east-west axis with the entrance to the east, on the east. Some have, suggest, some have suggested that this permitted the sun to illuminate, like illuminati, to illuminate the inside of the temple, of Jehovah's Temple on the first day of autumn and that this was, re was related to the solar cult of the festival of Yahweh's enthronement. 
the sun god Aton, tetragram Aton. We see it on Jewish symbols, <clears throat> sunrise Torah. We see the pictures of sunrise, you know, some worshiping Jews in Jerusalem, worshiping God's son, the light of the world, our risen savior, the church and the religions in general. <clears throat> We have global spiritual communism. And the, the, the masters of this world realized our incoming world government will be called God's kingdom. And God's kingdom is gonna be the same old stuff that's always been pushed from day one. <clears throat> God's kingdom will have the symbol of a blazing sun rising over the mountains of the east to represent the coming of the World Communist Party to rule the world. Here you have pictures within the Christian church of the sunrise over the mountains. Christian challenge, you'll see the sunrise over the mountains. The whole idea of Christianity is based on the sunrise over the mountains of the east. Stained glass. <clears throat> where the hapless father is showing his wife and the children, see, here's what we're gonna be crawling on our knees to, the Masonic Order of Italy, under the Holy Father, who, re who represents God through the world Godfather, who's gonna bring about the new day and a new dawn of the sunrise. And Jimmy Carter, oh Jimmy, in a speech in Plains, Georgia, on the dawn of November 3rd, 1976, Jimmy said, I see the sun rising on a beautiful new day. A beautiful new day, Jimmy called it. No wonder our country has been raped and plundered and our laws are, are trashed and our future is being trashed. So we have something called the new day, <clears throat> which is CNN. I call CNN the Communist News Network, the New Day. And so the New Day is, is, is presented in CNN, and what is it inside of? It's inside of a red square. That's what you, in Russia, they have a red square in the, in the, Soviet, in the, in the Soviet government, it's in the red square. And so this whole idea of the dawn of a new day for the entire world is coming about. Nearly, nearly a dozen big Republican uh, donors backing uh, different presidential uh, candidates are running, are coming together to help fund an advertising campaign attacking the front runner Donald Trump, who faces sharp criticism from rule from rules. This week for his inflammatory comments about Muslims. Matthew David, a spokesman for the group planning this attempt by this by the super PAC, calls the new day for America. And this is where it's, it's going to be supporting the Ohio, Ohio government, governor, and this whole new thing about uh, to overthrow the President Trump is being guided by an organization called the New Day for America, the World Communist Movement. Now, Karl Marx we know has been called the father of communism. He was, a, he was the father of nothing. He didn't, didn't come up with communism. It was the Illuminati Freemasons. But here in this article in the encyclopedia it says, Karl Marx said that for society to change into a communistic society is going to take a transitional period. It's going to take a little time for us to get the people prepared for the accepting a new world order in their government. No more freedom, no more of that bull crap of freedom and liberty and justice for all. That's over. We got a new government coming out, a new world order in which everybody is going to crawl on your knees to the emperor. And you better get yourself in line with the new government. And so Karl Marx said that for a society to change into a communist government, 
That's why we have old B.O. with the change you can believe in. Yeah, the change is changing from American to a communist new world order. Here in the uh, Discovery Channel had a series of videos put out about the life of Adolf Hitler. And it says in the back of this video, it says, Volume 1, The Early Years of Adolf Hitler. For a nation in darkness, well, Germany was not in darkness. It was a highly intelligent country. And it says, for a nation in darkness, it was the promise of a new dawn for the failed artists, Adolf Hitler. It was a chance to change society. Well, that's what B.O. talked about, the change that people will believe in. This is the change you've been waiting for. You're tired of all this freedom and liberty and justice for all and goodness and decency. Let's change it into a world communist party and a world totalitarian state in which the whole world will now live under totalitarian Roman fashion. The dawn of a new day communist crap was not new, of course, but back in 1939 we see the World's Fair was called the dawn of a new day in New York, 1939 World's Fair. Most people didn't know what that all meant, but the dawn of a new day was the World Communist Party out of Italy, Rome, secret societies, manipulating and exploiting the ignorance of the people, setting up a whole new world order. Dawn of a new day. <clears throat> we have the music of Horace Height, the musical accompaniment to the World 1939 World's Fair. Dawn of a new day. Nine and a half mystics, the Kabbalah today. The Kabbalah and the ninth chapter of this book called The Fragrance of Eden, the way of one who is caught between the suns of a dying and a dawning new day. It's all part of an ancient Jewish religion based on the Aton, the God of Egypt, the God of the sun. And here you have Socialism as dreamed of by Karl Marx cannot be entirely brought about by comprehensive systems of state ownership and by the leveling of wealth. If that were done without the spiritual leveling, the result would be the same as you largely suggest. These were two people talking about, can we have this new world order of the, of the world revolutionary movement take over the entire earth without the churches, without religion? No, you gotta get the churches involved. You get the people in the churches involved to support the World Communist Party. Oh, okay, if that's the case. So here we have Christian television and radio stations <clears throat> with 14 hours of Christian teachings. You will see the first program is called The Dawn of a New Day. <clears throat> the New Day Community Church, sunrise behind the mountains of the east. The New Day Community Church of Nazarenes. It's a new day dawning. So get ready and get on your knees and be prepared to accept the Lord in the new day which is coming. The new Messiah, a new order on the earth. <clears throat> you always see the sunrise behind the mountains of the east. The churches have bought into this stuff big time. <clears throat> it's a new day. Christianity has bought into this Masonic New Day, New Dawn crap, and, and the people have no idea in the world. They're just following, as they always have. They just follow what their preachers tell them, and they are, their church is going all the way for the dawn of a new day. Here's a <clears throat> daily Bible study. We need to study about the dawn of a new day. New Day Christian Church Fellowship. <clears throat> it's all over the web, everywhere you go. 
New Day Christian churches. Everything is the new day and the new dawn with the sun rising. <coughs> and Jesus, of course, is the sun who is rising. He is our risen Savior. Of course, Jesus is your risen Savior because Jesus represents the sun. And the sun is your risen Savior. If it don't come up tomorrow, we're dead in three weeks. So the sun is your risen Savior. <coughs> So if you're looking for God and anything spiritual in churches, you might as well forget it. This is one great big Marxist, Leninist, communist operation that is now hovering over the entire world. And the people of this world have no idea in the world what this stuff really means and where it actually came from. But it's coming. <coughs> Now what's interesting in, in conclusion, and here is the really interesting part, the, the, the culmination of all of this. The New Day Church for people like you. And I'm thinking of myself when I first read that. The, the New Day Christian Church for people like you who have no brains, who have no... <laughs> who are brain dead, who have never been educated, that don't know how to read, can't think, and have no idea in the world what's going on. This is a church just for you. It's called a New Day Christian Church. So just come on in and sit down and be quiet and make sure you're in compliance with your government for the New Day Christian Christianity. One last thing I wanted to show you. <coughs> Welcome to the New Day Church. This poor girl has no idea on the earth what's going on. And she is leading all the other people who really are ignorant, have no idea. So we can say that the Communist Party, in the dawn of a new day for the world of Christianity is over. The churches are now in the fully in the hands of the Masonic order out of Rome. This is why the Vatican and the Roman system of Freemasonry operates throughout the whole world. And the people have no idea in the world what the symbols mean and where it came from. But this is what's important as from, from me, from my point of view. I do this little piece in on the end. Back in the 1980s, early 1980s, there was a television show about aliens who came from another planet and came here to this world and wanted to take over the world of mankind. And they were reptilian aliens. And they presented themselves as the saviors of the human race. We come here to save the, few, the, the human family, to protect you and to give you a new technology and all these wonderful things we're going to do for you while we're eating you. And so the, the television show was the or, original miniseries called V. Do you remember this? Did you ever see it? Yes. Okay, now V was redone a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, ABC, this was originally on NBC. ABC, equally as bad as NBC, I always say ABC is all about communism. <laughs> NBC is nothing but communism. <laughs> and CBS is a communist broadcasting system. <laughs> so in the 1980s, there was a television show, and this is important, a TV show called Original Miniseries V, where it was a story of the extraterrestrials who came here in a huge saucer-shaped disc and they took over the earth and slowly but surely they were being able to take over the whole world. And little by little by little, they're taking over the entire earth. And <clears throat> the article in the newspaper talked about how V stands for victory. Well, the communists have a victory. This is the emblem or the sign that gets spray painted over posters of the alien race that have come to the earth 
and is, uh, and is used as a sign of rebellion for those who stand against the aliens, the reptilians in form. The aliens disguise themselves as humans. They look human. And in order to pull, uh, pull them off their God, pull the people off their God, the aliens look like beautiful humans. And they've come here to help you. They're going to help you like Jesus. They're going to help you like the church. And what they're going to help you, you'll see. They claim that they need, they claim that they are in need of a chemical substance on our planet and ask for the, our help to produce it. In return, they offer to teach us about their advancements in science and technology that the aliens have. And little to the human's knowledge, the reptilians are in fact stealing our water and, and cryogenically freezing humans to transport them back to their planet for food. That sounds about normal. The series centers on the efforts of a journalist named Michael Donovan and a group, and a group of rebel, rebel fighters who try and save the planet by fighting against the aliens. So if you remember that show, it came on back in 1980 called V. Well, ABC also created the show just recently. And here it is on ABC Network. The TV series called V. <clears throat> and V in the magazine is being advertised and says ABC has released this full new preview of V, which is the re-imaging of the 1980s miniseries about the world's first encounter with an alien race and what the aliens call themselves the visitors and have a seemingly friendly agenda and may or may not be covered for something more malevolent. So ABC has redone uh, the, uh, the television show V. Then another ad that says this, the full V preview now online. The source is ABC television. ABC has released a full new preview of V, which is a re-imaging of the 1980 miniseries about the world's first encounter with an alien race in which the aliens and them call themselves the visitors and have seemingly friendly agenda that may or may not be covered for something more malevolent. And here is the punchline to this whole lecture. And in the TV series, the so-called visitor, alien visitors, describe, they distribute a booklet among the people of the world explaining their mission here on the earth. And the TV series, the so-called visitors distribute a booklet explaining their mission here on the earth. I think that's very nice of them to do that, to explain to all the humans on the earth what the alien visitors are going to do. Here is the, here is the uh, pamphlet uh, distributing from the V television, the dawn of a new day. This is ABC television promoting world communism and the video V. And they're telling us that it is the alien visitors who have put us up to this crap and who are misleading the entire human race. About 10 minutes. 10? <clears throat> so the bottom line on this is we have been had the whole human race by so-called visitors, alien visitors. And that's what I believe has been happening, is that the world is being guided into a destiny that we cannot get out of. We cannot, 
We cannot face the reality of the destiny we are facing on the earth today. We humans are nothing more than animals to the visitors. And it's frightening to think of how ABC and NBC national radio and television shows are promoting the dawn of a new day in their television shows. America and the New World Order back in 1940. Building a new world is dumb and dumber. <laughs> Karl Marx said the society to change into a communist system. There he is, the communist leader, to change our society. And Hillary with the dawning of the new day. And we have Adolf Hitler on the top with his fist rising, his raising fist for the dawn of a new day for Germany and our, and our beloved Nazi, fascist, bloodletting, murderous <clears throat> traitor to our country uh, with his fist leading the American people and the American government into a dawn of a new day revolution. <clears throat> American zombie, that's who we are today. We're here, we're dead, and get used to it. <laughs> and here is Adolf Hitler giving the communist symbol, the, the, the salute for the World Communist Party, and we have Miss, uh, what's her name? Debbie. Debbie. Wasserman Schultz, the head of the Democratic Party. Miss Schultz, a nice Jewish girl, with her hand raised with Adolf Hitler for the dawn of a new day for the American people. My God, these people are horrible. We need to wake up and let the world know that this is not going to work. All over the world, humans know that there's something very bad coming. And something very bad is, is in the wind. And I'm telling you, watch what's going to happen in America in October of this coming year. I believe that there's going to be something terrible is going to happen in October. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I do believe it's going to be absolutely, unbelievably horrible. And Americans are not prepared for it because these people who are working for the dawn of a new day, like Adolf Hitler and David Wasserman Schultz and all these other people who are helping to lead the American people into their destiny of criminality and putting us into prison camps and taking our country and our freedoms from us, we're losing bad. Why? Because of education. The people of this world are not educated. And that's what I'm trying to do is to enlighten the human family as to what's coming. And here we have the silver dollar with the lady <coughs> uh, Liberty. And the article said Miss Liberty is walking toward the dawn of a new day. Isn't that wonderful? And here we have <coughs> Uh, Stalin talking about this is what we call socialism. That's why you have all the social networks, Facebook and all these other uh, social networks. Yeah, because this is called socialism. Socialism is nothing more than the old Masonic order out of Vatican promoting a world totalitarian dictatorship. So you can flush your hope here. <laughs> Who is behind the world communist plot to destroy civilization around the world? The guys who are really behind this stuff in the Vatican is a special group, and you need to know who they are. Here they are. They're called the Jesuits. As far as I'm concerned, the Jesuits are the original men in black. The Jesuits are a special priesthood who are designed and, and promoted 
and designed to do one thing, and that is to overthrow mankind's governments and bring about a new Vatican Masonic new world order in which all nations of the world of this world will crawl on their knees to the Holy Father who will bring about what we call a new world order out of Rome. This is what we are now dealing with, a group called the Jesuits. Jesuits purveyors of world violence since 1540. World violence by the Jesuits. The secret plan of the order. Books that I have had in my possession of, about understanding the secret society of the Jesuits. It's even called the Jesuit Conspiracy. Code word about ba ba Babylon, danger in the Vatican, the sons of Loyola, and their plans for world domination. The Jesuits out of the Vatican. It is my opinion, said the Marquis de Filat, de Filat, in my opinion that the liberties of this country, the United States of America, are destroyed, will be destroyed if it will be by the subtlety of the Roman Catholic Jesuit priests. For they are the most crafty, dangerous enemies to civil and religious liberties. They have instigated most of the wars of Europe, said the Marquis d'Affelier, the French statesman. John Adams, my history of the Jesuits is not eloquent, eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities. It is very particularly and very horrible. There, there the Jesuit order of Pius XII is indeed a step toward darkness, cruelty, despotism, etc., and death. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits. If ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in the hell and in hell, it is the Jesuits of the Ignatius Loyola of the Catholic Church. Uh, Winston Churchill said, you must understand that this is not against Hitler or National Socialism. This war is against the strength of the German people, which is to be smashed once and for all, regardless of whether it is in the hands of a Hitler or a Jesuit priest. Abraham Lincoln said, I feel more and more each day that it is not against the Americans of the South alone that we are fighting. It is more against the people of Rome, the Pope of Rome, and his perfidious Jesuits, and their blind and bloody, bloodthirsty slaves. Uh, Abraham Lincoln to Charles Chinderby, the priest. So, the three Jesuits and the downfall of the president. Uh, Richard Nixon had him around, around himself. He had Jesuit priests advising him. And they advised him and, you know, and give him the advice on what to do with his presidency. And he ended up losing the presidency and stepping down. And so the article in the, in the magazine says Watergate SG. S.J., Society of Jesus, three Jesuits in the downfall of the president. People don't know that in that Watergate hearing, that was all about the Jesuits overthrowing the United States government. The secret history of the Jesuits who founded Nazism. They financed it, organized it, directed it, the Communist Party and the Nazi Party. The Jesuits and Marxism. These are articles and magazines and books and videos about the rise of the Jesuits and the Catholic Church. Why are the American Jesuits going to bat for the communists? And, the, and this, this uh, incredible old man is a Jesuit 
leading the Jesuits, and if you find out the stuff that he has pulled himself, the, the incredible stuff that he has done himself, and how absolutely, without a doubt, is so incredibly evil. And the people of the church couldn't care less. They just loved the Pope, just like they loved old B.O. Because the people just love to be, they love, the people seem to be in love with the idea of being ripped off and raped and plundered. And so the church says, yeah, well, somebody's got to do it, so it might as well be us. Here is the first Jesuit mafia pope is given a crucifix with Jesus hanging on the communist hammer and sickle by Romania's communist dictator. And here the, the Pope is getting a hammer and sickle from the Communist Party. And you'll see Jesus hanging on the, on the, hammer, on the hammer. The Jesuits were organized by the religious zealot Ignatius Loyola. They have been identified as the controllers behind the U.S. government. They are themselves merely lieutenants of the cult of Anton. The imagery of their emblem leaves us no doubt as to their occult history and their agenda. A new world order under the coming Son of God. And here you will see the two official Jesuit priests, one's blue and one's red. And that's what we're told that our country is being divided between blue and red. The Jesuits are behind our political processes and our governmental systems. I think that we are being taken over by extraterrestrials. In, in, in Europe, they have statues. Incredible. Here's Jesus, blue and red. Jesuit priest, and you'll see Bush on one side and the, the other dingbat on the other side. <laughs> Kennedy and Nixon. The Pope is referred to as the Holy Father because he is a, he represents God on earth and he is the real Godfather in, in Rome. The Godfather, the Holy Father who represents God. Anyway, Who's gonna be our say it again. Who's going to be our president, our next president? What did she say? She asked you who was going to be our next president. You've already got him. You've already got the next president. Trump will be the next president. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But it's going to really be very, very difficult because they are planning on some kind of an international movement against Trump. And there's no doubt in my mind about that. He's gonna go through some terrible times because they are trying to overthrow him and get him out of office because they know that he knows what's going on and he knows who the enemy is and they're trying to get rid of him because they know that the next election is going to be really tough. So I believe that we're going to see some terrible things happening soon. And I want to thank you for putting your time and thank you for listening to me. Jordan Maxwell, everybody.